Hello and welcome. In my video today, this is my third or fourth attempt to make such a video, I'm going to take this MTH Rail King passenger car and we're going to put LED lighting in it. The reason behind this is, is I don't like the idea of the lights flickering as the cars go around the track and there was an article in Classic Toy Trains a number of years ago on how to add flicker free lighting with LEDs and I have expanded on that and I'm going to hopefully in this video show you all the steps to do that or add that to this particular passenger car. So let's get this car open. Okay, have the car out of the box and unwrapped. And first thing we're going to need to do is remove the roof. Now to do that on this particular MTH passenger car, under each truck, right in this location here, there was a screw. You just take the screw out and then you're able to remove the top. And I'll go ahead and I'll remove the screws now. Then I'll come back and show you how the top comes off. Okay, I'm ready to take the top off now. It took me a, f a while to find the information on how to do this. Um, but basically you just grab the ends of the cars and you make a twist. Now, the one of the cars that I've done recently on this, I had to twist it so hard the top popped off and I actually jabbed myself in the end. So I'm just wearing some dollar store gloves here to do that with now. And hopefully it won't damage me and won't damage the car. Just that easily, off she pops. Let's get back here in the foam cradle and see what we have to work with. Now I'm not saying my way is the only way to do this, but the steps that I do to accomplish this are, once I have the car apart to this point, I consider what I want to do and where I want to put what. And because this has such a large enough area here on the sides, I can hide a lot of components in here. If I'm afraid of looking in there to see something, I may block the windows, I may print out some heads of people and uh, tape them in place like that, but we'll see as we go along what we need to do. So basically though, how I'm going to accomplish this is the first thing, since I'm using LEDs, I'm going to use an LED strip, is I want to see where I'm going to have to mount the LED strips and how I'm going to get power to it now. The LEDs are DC powered, so the first thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to rectify the AC voltage from the track into DC. That's really not too much of a problem now. I do not have any kind of a background in electronics whatsoever. However, there is just a unknown score of information on the internet and especially eBay on how to do that. So basically what I have done is I have built some bridge rectifiers to rectify the AC to DC and I put some voltage regulators on there, 12 volt, because that's what the LED strip runs on. Put them together, just makes small circuits like this out of them. These are both for 12 volt. This is a pre-made bridge rectifier here, and these will work just fine. Once I have rectified the voltage to DC, I need some way to store it. So what I use is capacitors, and what I think is going to work very well in this is um, some very large storage size capacitors, so small in size themselves, some 6800 microfarad capacitors, and it looks like I can fit one right here and one right down here. And that should be plenty of storage for flicker-free lighting. I mean, they only go out for a part of a second, so that should work absolutely fine. There's plenty of space in here. I can hide components on the floor, you won't necessarily see them, or I can add some other things that look like uh, something you would see stored inside of a uh, train car, uh, luggage, uh, barrels, miscellaneous junk, anything like that, all could go in there. I have to consider where I'm going to get my power from. The article that I referenced from Classic Toy Trains from a few years back, the person who wrote the article was actually tapping into the socket here. They took the lamp and the holder for it out, fished wires into it, and plugged it back in and just removed the other lamp, and that's where he got his power from. Now, I kind of like to leave the original lights in. If they do flicker, it looks maybe like a single individual light over a seat or something is going out. 
and I also don't really want to make any changes to the car if I don't have to, so I'll make as few as possible. So what I have found with these MTH cars is they have like a rail at the bottom, it's just really two wires, that pass power from one end of the car to the other. And I'm going to actually tap into them. I already tested this out and soldered here. One of them it runs to the uh, third rail pickup and the other one runs to the ground through the wheels of the, on the trucks. And as I say, I already tested it. That's good power coming in and that's where I'm going to get my power. I'm going to run it to my rectifier circuit into the capacitors up to the LED strip, which I'm going to mount somewhere up in here. How I am going to mount this LED strip is on a piece of this scrap wood. I got this at Home Depot, but you could get these at like Michael's or any craft shop where I'm going to cut this to a length, mount the LED strip onto this, and then suspend it from these original light posts that are in here. Now the problem with that is that these posts are glued and there was no way to get underneath them. So what I had to do is break one of them loose. And basically how I did that, I picked which one I wanted to break loose and I took a small screwdriver and I just pried up on it until it broke. Nine times out of ten it'll just pop out like it's supposed to and you can glue it back in. But this one broke on the far end. It's not a big deal. Usually to mount a piece of strip wood in the bottom I just use a little drop of high temperature hot glue and that'll hold that right back in place again no problem at all. Okay, I took a little break and I soldered the two capacitors together like that and they do fit in very well in that spot right there. Not a problem. Pro to hold it down permanently I'll probably just use a very small piece of Velcro, maybe a half inch to an inch in size, attach it to the bottom of one of the capacitors and then to the floor of the car and it may shift a little bit but otherwise it's not going to really come loose or it's ever going to come out of there on its own. I've been using that to attach components for a while now and it's worked out very well. So let's see what our next step will be here. So I'm just now trial fitting where components are going to go. You should just saw I, where I put the capacitors. I'm looking where to fit my rectifying circuit and I think right about here will be a good spot somewhere right around there. It's not too close to the window. I can do something to block that area so it can't be seen. My next step is going to be to cut the piece of wood that the LED strip is going to mount on. Now one of the things that I neglected the first time I did one of these was now right here and here are the posts that the roof mounts to. Now the first time I did this I was completely oblivious of that I put the piece of wood in the center of the car and then when I went to put the roof on and I'm like, hey, can't put the roof on. And then as I mentioned, I don't want to modify the cars any if I don't have to. So what I ended up doing was putting it at an angle like a so. Because another problem with that car, which this one doesn't have, is the original lighting for this car. They're both on the same side. So I can offset this a little bit off the of center and it'll fit just fine. Now I did have one car when one light was on one side, one light was on the other side, and I had to put it in at an extreme angle, something akin to this, to get it to fit. But it did fit. I did get it in there. It, it worked fine. There's also the possibility you could take and cut the strip of wood smaller than the space in between the two posts, but I like it to go as large as I can to get as my, much light distribution as I can. Now one of the problems with this particular car is it has a lavatory on both sides. Now this wood stick, once it's in here and mounted with the lights on it, is going to stick below the top of the lavatory. Uh, I don't really know what I can do about that. Um, maybe nothing. I'll have to think about that. There are some options. I could mount just one little section of the LEDs. I have that set in here somewhere like this. I could mount it on the side or even underneath to shine down in this particular area. Now the underside of the roof does have some reflectors and that might also in itself put a little bit of light in there. Now as I get along closer to the final fit for this thing I'll decide what will and won't fit or won't work but uh, 
right now this is moving right along. Okay, I have the wood stick measured to the size I want. Cut lines right where that pencil line is there by my thumb. Now, a consideration to make here is how much empty space, so to speak, am I going to have on that stick? Now, this LED strip, every three lights you can cut this. So I want to make sure or check how long of a strip can I get without going too long. Of course, it's not really any point in making the stick itself any longer than it needs to be. It just gives it that much more of a problem to work with. I'll find my original line again. Line up one in here. And that actually looks like that's going to line up almost the entire length of the stick. Okay, we've got the stick cut to size. I'm trial fitting it here. Now you can see why you have to take one of these loose. Because you can't get that stick under there otherwise. But that'll fit roughly in this position. The size is good. I think that aspect of it is good to go. I want to mark something else here. Roughly where the lavatory is. I'm considering possibly doing is once I get the LED strip attached, is maybe putting just a single strip here and a single strip here for lighting of the lavatory. I may only light one or may not do it at all. I haven't decided yet. Now these LED strips, you now they, they attach because they have a uh, sticky backing on them. So just peel the adhesive tape off. This is a very tight fit, so I'm going to go all the way to the end. And space between each one. I'm going to push it down. It's not overly adhesive, so you may need to give it a good push. Now, I had one that wanted to come up, and I basically just took some of the high temperature hot glue and applied to the stick and smeared it out very well as much as I could and then set it down before it got too hard and it worked very very well. Now every so often and you'll see it on this one twice there are little solder connections already on here. In case I didn't already mention it or mention it in one of the past videos I suck at soldering. So I will do any of that like I did for the capacitors. I'll do any of that off camera or this will turn into a 30, 40 minute video. And just attach that on there real good. That eventually will sit right in there. But what I'm basically at this point what I'm doing is just getting all the parts ready to assemble. But I'm not going to assemble anything yet and I'll come back to that here shortly. I've actually made a decision on lighting one of the lavatories. I put just a single section of the LED strip here on the side. That'll be sitting in here like this, so hopefully that'll light this lavatory. It may be putting a lot of light out of this one window here, but uh, I can live with that. Now, something that I'm going to play around with is like a clear lacquer or maybe a clear fingernail polish to paint over these LEDs to dim them down some. In a case like this, I may not want full intensity on that. This will be in a position where I can get to it. It's going to mount, if you look straight down at it there, where the uh, post is sticking up for mounting the roof. That's going to fit in there just fine. i still be able to get to it if I want to take it apart later. Okay, I think I've gone about as far as I can with pre-assembly. I have the light strip that I'm going to install. It'll be going right here. I have the light post removed so I can get underneath to install it. I'm going to put my rectifying circuit right about here. I got the capacitors are going to go about here. Most likely I will hide the wiring by running it up above 
attaching it with a uh, dental floss or something to the uh, stick that I'm going to have the LED light strips on. Everything will be going right in this area here. I just need to do some soldering on this and I'm going to st start assembly. However, the biggest thing and the first thing you want to do, or at least I want to do, when you start assembling this, mistake I made, the first car like this I did, I did not install the people first. And you, to me, you've got to do that first because you just can't work inside the car once you have it assembled and try to put people in. I found that one of the most tedious things to do with this is putting the people in. I've had extreme problems gluing them. I've tried hot glue. It cools down too fast. Uh, model airplane glue, same thing. You can't really see necessarily where you're putting it, getting the people to sit. But the biggest problem I have with the people is once you put them in place and you let go, they fall. A lot of problems with that. Now, I'm trying to get permission to use somebody else's video. I'll leave a link in it to where I can. It's an excellent video on how to put people in cars like this. Rather than bore you with my attempts with that, I'm just going to take whatever time it takes now to do that. And once that's in, we're going to start final assembly. Just a little update about an hour later, probably a little bit more than an hour later. I managed to get 17 people in here. It wasn't easy. One of those people is actually in the lavatory here. But uh, for the most part, I used Dollar Store Super Glue Gel for the ones I could place. And the other, other ones that just wouldn't stick initially, I put in place best I could and just drops regular super glue on top of it. So the gel takes a long time to dry, so I guess I am done with this project today. I'm going to do some initial soldering and for the LED strip, and I guess I'll let this go until tomorrow. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the people, I've done the finished soldering here on the LED strip. I have it temporarily hooked to the uh, voltage regulator circuit that I got. Now that's a 12 volt voltage regulator on there. I tried a 9 before. It did work, but the uh, lights just weren't staying on as long as I felt they should. But I got this all temporarily hooked together here. Let's plug her in and see if she works. And on goes the power. There's the section of the strips for the lavatory. Looks good. Put full power up here. All right. So far, everything is working out real good. Welcome back. It's another day. The glue should be dry. The people should be in place. I actually decided to add a couple more people, make the car look a little more full. Now, as I was going through and editing yesterday's videos, I did notice something I wanted to uh, elaborate slash correct on. I mean, taking the roof off, the screws I was referring to, you have to remove, are down in here underneath the truck itself, not these screws on the outside. You probably can't see this one because of the poor lighting I have today because the sun's not out. These smaller screws at the very end are actually on the other side here. You take those out to remove the inner body of the car. The ones that hold the roof on, the screws come up through this post here and tie into the actual roof member itself. So now that I've got that out of the way, let's get back to assembling the car. A thought I just came up with, um, though I think the capacitors I'm putting in here are plenty to light this car. The car I may be running after this one, or behind this one, is a full length passenger car. Seats all the way from one end to the other. There may not be room, probably is not room, to put circuits and a capacitor in there. While I'm sure I can suspend the LED lights above it, I may not be able to put anything in there to power the lights. So what I'm actually thinking is I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to leave room for a third capacitor, probably set like right about there. It's not really showing up in the 
field of view too much if you're looking in through the windows. I mean, if you're watching the passenger car go by on a layout somewhere, it's going by so fast. You just really see people in there. You can't make them out, and this will probably just look like something else. I'm not going to be worried about that. As I say, I'm not going to stick it in, but I'm going to leave place for it should I want to expand on it later. And what I will do is I'll just stick a small connector in like this, hook it up to there, run it and hook one into the other car and run it about that far out from the truck. I can plug them together and I don't need to build a complete other circuit for the other car. Okay, I've trimmed the wires on my regulating circuit. I'm going to tin those up and get them soldered in place next. I got the soldering iron warming up. As soon as I get these in, we'll start the last of the final fitting on this. So I'll be right back. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that solder connection is made. Okay, I got the circuit in place. It's not quite exactly how I wanted it. It's a little bigger than I anticipated, but I can hide the uh, voltage regulator sticking out. Here is another unanticipated problem. When I go to install the light strip, the very end of it here is just contacting the tops of the connection for the uh, capacitors. There just isn't enough room in there. And these are actually, the copper colored things are live strips and I can't have that touching the uh, contacts of the capacitors. So, not sure what my options are going to be here. I could cut the strip off here or I could try to and what I think I'm going to do is just set the capacitors down on their sides like this and shove them up in there as far as I can I'll probably turn them around the other way so the wires don't show but so little of it will show I'll stick something in front of it and it'll just look like it's something inside the car again the car is going to be going by so fast you're not really going to be able to see anything I could get by with using a smaller capacitor, something that isn't as high, but then the amount of storage is going to be smaller. And I, considering the option that of possibly and quite likely hooking a second car to it, I'd rather have the larger capacity. Considering the tight quarters I'm now working with, I decided to go ahead and add the third capacitor in advance of uh, possibly having to run wires out to power a second car. Easier to do it now than later. As this was an unanticipated issue, I've had to run the ground wire over the positive wire off the capacitors. I put a two layers of shrink wrap tubing over it just to uh, play it on the safe side. Another unexpected little issue, I can't get the capacitors to sit quite where I want them to. So I've broken out the hot glue gun, and as long as I got it out, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that post back in, and that's probably how I'll tie the uh, lights on to these cross members for the lights, but I really got it out so I can put a spot down there on the bottom and put, get that capacitor to set where I want it. Okay, I've got all the components more or less in place, and I've got hot glue setting on them, and as I mentioned yesterday, I use a high temperature hot glue so I'm going to give this probably 20-25 minutes for it to completely harden and then I'll get back to the finished wiring on this okay I have everything together here and I have the wires all the, the negative and the positives all put together I just need to solder that cover that with some shrink wrap tubing stuff it in there out of the way put the car back together and give it a test we're almost finished Now, in my zeal, as I usually do in the other videos I've made like this, I just get into a hurry and want to get it finished and working. And this is really kind of a messy looking job. I could have done a lot better on it, and maybe I will in the next one. I think this is a good demonstration of just basically how it's done, how neat you make it is up to you. But I could have taken the whole voltage regulating circuit and actually attached it right here 
go directly into the capacitors, run the lights up to here, then this would be completely open, none of the stuff sticking in front of the windows or anything like that. And while I'm talking about windows, now I've been very careful when I've done this in the past, I'll have something greased, maybe even adhesive glue or something on my fingers and I'll touch a window. Now if it's something that'll clean off, it's not so bad if it's on the outside, but once it's on the inside and you put the roof back on, you've got to take the car back apart to clean it off. And if it's glue or something and you touch it, I, it's not coming off then. So I'm always very careful what I touch, where I touch, and what's on my fingers. Just finishing up the heat shrink tubing here. Ready to do some final assembly and testing. I should have posted my warning earlier in the video about touching the windows. Now right here on this window here and this one here right over the lavatory. I clearly see fingerprints. I tried cleaning them off. They didn't come off. They must have been from the super glue residue that I had on my fingers. Uh, there's really nothing I can do. I just hope that the light will be bright enough that it will show through it with enough intensity you won't see the fingerprints. Okay, everything is in place, tied down where I want it. Let's put her back together and see if it actually works. Okay, the car is assembled. Now comes the fun part. I put it on a piece of track. Let's plug the transformer in. Attach it to the track. And see if we have a successful installation. Buying power. And the lights come on. How about that? Looks like it worked. Full intensity on the uh, old American Flyer Transformer. Looking good. Let me take the camera off the mount here. A successful installation. Well, that's one car down. I think I have seven or eight cars all together and putting lights in. I think this is car number four or number five. I'll be on to the next car. And now the fun begins. Clean up! Anyway, I hope you find this video helpful. There's something in here you can use. I appreciate your watching. Hope you can support this channel. Like, subscribe, comment. Comments always welcome. Thanks again for watching. Oh, I forgot the most important thing. How long do the lights stay on once you disconnect the power? Let's see. Flicker free won't be a problem now.